Oh, a nice windy day. This is uh, this is February 13, 2006. Desert Hot Springs, California, the home of Inez Leonard. Here comes Alta Hester. <laughs> We're pretty prom. Uh -oh. Oh, oh, good ten morning. It's 10 o'clock, huh? 10 o'clock, hi. hi. Which one is Alta? I this am. is Alta. I, you know, I thought so. Uh, and I'm Nancy. Nancy, Na Na come on in. Hello, Thank my you. dear. <laughs> uh, so. Nice to finally meet you. Could we have posings here for you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very oh. much. In Resort Hotel. Now, isn't the desert, wasn't the desert, the desert in? Inn is where, um, it, well, it, now it's been made into it. You was, at one time it was, um, uh, it was a big department store. Hmm. And, but now they made it into that place in uh, Dead Palm Springs that, I forget what it is, but they're having a lot of trouble. It's never been a success. Oh, that one that's closed that used to be, uh, yeah, it's the Westman property, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. But that was right in the heart of town. Oh, yes. Yeah. But when I, well, see, we came here, I came here in 1944. She died in 1950. So, uh, and, and there was no stores here. There was no stores at all. No. But you could, at that place I told you where we danced, we could get a, uh, wait a minute, T-bone steak dinner, french fries and everything for a dollar and a quarter. Oh. And this is the lady, this was, picture was taken in my backyard. This is Ma Dodd, that she's the one that owned this dance hall. Oh, for goodness sakes, Ma Dodd. Was that like D O D D Dodd? Yeah. Oh, Mom Dodd and Mary Jane Rubah. Ruba. And our old the trader in the backyard. Them. How great. She was a darling. And, she, and, and this one was too, of course, they've both been dead for many years. And you said that dancing place and eating place was called the Idol the Hour. The Idol Hour. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote it down here. Oh, yeah. The Ilar Cafe, and her husband, Chester Dodd, see, there was no post office here at all. We didn't get mail in Desert Hot Springs. Her husband worked as a meat cutter in uh, Palm Springs. And I guess anyone that wrote to people here <laughs> Are you taking my picture? Yeah. I uh, hate that. Mm, You'll like it later. Yeah. It's yeah. very exciting because you're so animated. Uh, anyway, her husband worked as a meat cutter in Palm Springs. He'd go to work every day. On his way home, he'd stop at the post office and pick up any mail that was addressed to Desert Hot Springs. At the entrance to their cafe, they had a card table. And maybe he would have 15 pieces of mail. Fifteen, hmm. and he'd spread them out on the card table. And when you went down to the aisle, hour, you'd look through it. And if you had mail, you had mail. And if you didn't, uh -huh. and um, I was trying to think. Of, well, of course, there were no schools here at all. Uh, Buzz Gamble had quite an article about uh, six months ago about this girl in Texas that lived here that at that, that time, and her aunt who is Betty Hudspeth. Did you ever hear that name? That sounds familiar, yeah. Well, she's a very, uh, she's as old as I am. She's a very private person. Do you, you know where Sam's Mobile Park is? Yes. Well, see, her stepfather, uh, uh, Bill Tarbutton, was the well driller. He drilled all these hot water wells. Ah. They lived up on, uh, I think it was 4th Street. And um, this, this, this girl, wait, see, her niece was only a little girl, you know, and uh, Betty was our, worked in the post office for years. Last time I saw her, we were never friends. She was a very private person. 
when we came here before Desert Hot Springs was um, subdivided, and people bought it because the lots were cheap. Mm -hmm. The lots weren't cheap in the first place. The homes that were here were beautiful. They're still here. No. Up on the corner of, um, is it uh, 8th and uh, Palm, there was a ranch there. Uh, By Dinsmore had it. And it was like a guest ranch. And that, they uh, tore it all down. She had about, I don't know, five acres there. And what was it called? It was a guest ranch. Uh -huh. But her name was Vi Dinsmore. Vi very Dinsmore. colorful. Very colorful. She rode around in a white uh, uh, sports uh, sports car with a back down. Uh huh. Convertible. I think she used to um, be in the, something to do with the movies. She was either she had long blonde hair and she always dressed in white. Mmm, glamorous. Oh yeah. But whenever we had, but the, the houses that were here. Now the tar buttons lived on about Fourth Street. That house is still there, across the street, and they were all large, beautiful homes. Not like the, this, because I went to a party, Christmas, some kind of a Christmas party on Fourth Street, across from Tar Buttons. Beautiful home, big, huge. It's still there. Mm. It's still there. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, going back in time. Um, where were you before you came to Desert Hot Springs in 1944? Wilmington. Oh, Wilmington. That's where the letter uh -huh. came from. Aha. Uh -huh. And did you, um, were you born and grew up over there in that oh, area? Oh, no, I was or? born and grew up in the state of Washington. Aha. Uh -huh. And you came from the Midwest. I did. Il Illinois. E exactly. You have a great memory. Yeah, I was born outside of Chicago. I've been to Chicago, but... Uh, and, and you said you're 65? I'm going to be 67 this week. So, you're my role model. <laughs> oh, I can remember when my husband died, he was, I was 64. And my, see, my husband was a Los Angeles police fireman. That was a good job. Uh huh. So you came from Washington State. To, to Wilmington. To Wilmington, and then you met your husband there. Yeah. See, when we came, when I came down in 1922, <clears throat> the fleet was was anchored in Los Angeles. At, San, at Wilmington. Did See, they call it San Pedro then also, or was no, that San something Pedro's different? No, San Pedro is a separate place. Oh, that's different. Okay. See, the only thing wrong with me, outside of Nutty, <laughs> is I have sh I've had shingles for six years. You said they affect your eye, huh? I'm losing the sight in this eye. Oh. And you can notice it's different. Well, to look at, uh, it isn't that noticeable. I have it. vision in it, but not, uh, because as soon as I had um, the shingles, I didn't know what I had. Yeah. And shingles aren't bad, they're nobody. They're just very irritating. Well, uh, my, as soon as I got them, my granddaughter got on the internet, and I have all the literature about it, and all the doctors I've been to, they can't do a thing, mm -hmm. and you just lose your sight, eventually. Mm. Inez, hmm? do you remember the first time you ever came to Desert Hot Springs, the oh, first yes. day? How was that? Well, my mother's brother had a home up here, and I drove my mother down here to see her brother. And we stayed a couple of days, and I thought it was wonderful. The only pool is, is uh, the one that was up Coffee's Pool. You've heard of that? Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stayed a couple of days, and when I went home, my husband asked me how I liked it, and I said, you know, I had no intentions. So later on, we, my husband and I drove down. Oh, he just went. He had to live here. Hmm. He had to live here. <laughs> There's something about the desert, isn't there, that uh, Oh, I love draws desert hot people. springs. It's, it, I don't, well, I don't know whether it'll ever be. I, I think it's better than Palm Springs. 
because the views and everything are so much better. And when my kids used to come down here, uh, they couldn't wait. If we went to Palm Springs, I hated it. They loved it over here. So now, um, so you had your kids already when you moved out here? Oh, my two children were both in the service in the Second World War. And, and incidentally, they're both dead. Oh. So they were sort of grown up and, and out of the house when you and your husband came well, out here. Well, they were both in the, in the One was in the Marines mm -hmm. and one's in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And my oldest boy, if he were alive, would be 81 years old. And the youngest one would be 78. Mm -hmm. But the two um, sons. Uh, it, it, there's, it, it, it doesn't really bother me because I know why it was. But um, I, I can talk about my sons. I remember all the things, the wonderful times. And um, they're better off because the youngest one, the oldest one died from a, out from my um, uh, Aneurysm and in the, in the aorta. Oh, yeah. And the youngest one was, it was exactly like his father. I kind of think that when your time comes, you die. That's probably so. Was your husband ready to retire then when you came out here? I'm he was retired. He was retired. He retired. He was about, let's see, he was in his 40s. Hmm. So he put in... Um, 20, years 20 or more fire years department. fire department, yeah. He was an engineer on the fire boat in San Pedro. Ah. Now, was he a dancer? Did you both enjoy dancing at the Idle Hour? Or Never no? liked to dance with no. my husband. Oh. <laughs> but this was funny. They, they built, it, it wasn't right on the corner of Pearson and um, Palm. There was a real estate office there. A little building, not as big as this room. And that's where they uh, eventually would bring them in. That was the first post office. Uh -huh. But the right back in the back, that little garage, you know, that's on the corner of uh, Acoma, no, First Street. You know, see, Pearson's the First Street, and then Acoma, no, uh -huh. First Street. Mm -hmm. It's still there. It was there when we came here. A little garage. Oh, Bill's a gas station. Bill's or something like that. Oh, something. Oh, Bill's yeah. garage. Yeah. It is an old building. Yeah. That's right. And then the uh, the Dodds built this huge room with a huge fireplace. And every weekend they had a dance. That's. Uh -huh. And uh, they, there was a five five piece. I think they were Indians. They came from Palm Springs. I heard someone say one time, that the music was so great, and if you didn't know how to dance, you danced. Mm. Oh, so and that's where they had their meetings and whatever they did. So that was through the, the rest of the 40s and into the 50s then, huh? I don't know when they tore that down. I don't remember. I don't, I have some kind of memories, but I don't. Sure. But when we first came here, of course there was no parks or no nothing, and and of course all the streets were big rocks in them and ruts and mm. dirt streets. Even Palm Drive was dirt. Oh, rough. What do you think the population was? Well, I know there were only twelve houses, <gasps> all up on the up on the top there. Ah, 12 houses. And three children that went to school. And look at the schools. Oh, my goodness. And what, where did you live? What, what was your house like? When you, Here? Yeah, when you and your husband first came, what did you get into? Well, of course, my husband was retired. And he came down here and he bought a lot. And uh, he and uh, my uh, cousin's husband went into building. Well, you know, they would... Uh, Build houses for people. Uh huh. And uh, we bought a little. Well, he was building a house for us, and before, when he got it framed up in the roof, then somebody came along and bought it. Uh -huh. So we. Ne I don't. I think we spent one night there, but we never. Uh, 
never uh, lived in it. Uh -huh. So you were, you said something about your little trailer. So we, did you oh. live in the trailer while oh, the house was being no, built? No, no, that was just a travel trailer. Travel trailer. Uh -huh. It's a little, very small. Uh -huh. My, I, uh, it doesn't really hurt, but I'm always aware of it. Yeah. I, it's like you, when you're thinking about something else, you don't notice it as much. I think so. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I can still see things out of it, but I, I've noticed that it's very, it's getting, because this is the result of what they call a chicken pox. Yes. That's what, yeah, that's what they say. Do you have children? No, I don't. I don't. But I used to work at a college, so I, I worked with a lot of young people in my career. In this area? So, I mean in up in Riverside, actually. In Riverside, yeah. Uh -huh. Did you ever know a, uh, hmm, I can't think of her name, Fair. She was very up in, uh, her last name was Fair. Oh, she'd be much older than you. Mm. She'd be in her 80s. Forget it. Well. But she, uh, she was like, um, well, she would come out, this was in the Riverside, she would come out to um, 29 Palms and different, she'd check all the schools in Riverside. Oh. So now, so then your husband finally got a house for you to live in. You, he finished one well, and you well, guys lived in Well, we bought a little it. place and we lived in it and he built a room on and that sold. Everything <laughs> would sell. And we, and we did leave after about five years. We, uh, we went up to the back up to Washington, but we were there until just snowed and then my husband said, let's get out of here. What's their get, what they're getting back there now. Oh, yes. I don't think Audrey's coming. No, I, that's a Maybe mystery. Maybe lost. <laughs> I don't know. That's it's a shame. Um, what did you do then? Um, what did you get involved in uh, when you lived here? I mean, did you get into clubs oh, or well, everything? Yeah, everything, well, everything. meetings and all these do good things. I'm to, a where's... charter member of the Hands of the Desert. Have you ever been there? No, I don't. I don't even know what it is. <gasps> Tell me. Well, you've heard of Angel View. Yes. Okay. Well, of course, I knew all the people that started Angel View. And there was a big scandal about that, too, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not going into that. But um, uh, when I knew the people that, uh, when this Sister Kenny, remember, that uh, treated a boy here in town for polio? Yes. And these people, uh, they, uh, started you know, having meetings and stuff, and that's when Angel View started. Well, we had a one store here and everything, and um, this friend of mine was one of the ones that got it start, Angel View started. And then when the movie people in Palm Springs, Chuck Connors, you remember him? Uh-huh. Well, he had a Jeep in Palm Springs, and he used to come over to Angel View, the hospital, and um, take the children out for rides. And the people, the movie people got interested. Mm. In fact, Regis Philbin's son was up there. For goodness sake. Did you sake. know he had a, yeah. He had a, he had a disabled child, huh? Well, the, uh, I knew him when he was, uh, he was about eight. He was a brat. Hmm. And then who, you said you had a friend who was also involved in the development of Angel View. Oh, uh, yeah, she was on the board. Yeah, and what was her name? Lola, no, 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 Lola Agnew. Lola Agnew. Yeah, I was talking to Buzz Gamble, and he told me who? that Buzz at the, new, at the Valley Breeze, you know, Buzz Gamble. Oh, yeah, I've seen And he I've was telling me that he had a scrapbook that had some of the history of uh, Angel View. Um, but he misplaced it, so I hope he finds it again. <laughs> he probably will. Well, see, our local newspaper, which was the Sentinel, was written on such poor paper, the people that saved them, they disintegrated. But they do have it on tape. The Sentinel? Yeah, the Sentinel mm -hmm. has all the old ones on tape somewhere. Wow. 
I we, think the desert sun took over the sentinel that's when we lost our paper oh yeah there's so much that I personally don't know about the city yet you know I've been here for five years but we've all been working on trying to get the historical society kind of going again uh, because there was a period when uh, Dr. Buzz, uh, what was his name, Dr. Uh, Lonergan. Ted Lonergan. Ted, right. Ted Lonergan. Yeah, I didn't know him, but I, of course he passed away, yeah. and then uh, LaVita, who was involved, moved I away. I don't know her. I've uh, forgotten her name, LaVita. But so it was kind of like the historical society in town was kind of getting a little small and fragmented, so we're trying to bring it back together and try to figure out what we have and what we know. And so, you know, your memories are very, very important for, at, to us. At one time, I don't know whether you've ever heard, well, you know Cabot's, Cabot Yerkes is. Sure. Uh, at one time, the man, uh, let's see, who was it that bought it from Cabot? Uh, Cole, it was Cole Erod. Cole Erod. Yeah. Well, Cole Erod, uh, uh, he was a brilliant man. But I don't know what happened to him because, well, he was in an accident, he died in an accident. But he was our mayor at one time. But his, his mind got a little fuzzy. Oh. But he called me one time. This was after his mind got a little fuzzy. I don't know how long ago it was, 20 years ago maybe. And he asked me, there was a woman came here that wanted to write the history of Desert Hot Springs, but she wanted the city to pay her for it. Hmm. And he asked me if he, he, this woman could come and talk to me. Sure. And he said, could he come along? Sure. So we sat out at my kitchen table and uh, she would ask me questions. She had a tape recorder and mm -hmm. she taped it. But then when the city wouldn't pay her for it, she dropped it. Huh. Do you remember who she was? I have no idea. Mm. Well, at the time I did, but I only saw her once. Uh -huh. And I didn't remember the... Uh, and what other um, relationship did you have with uh, Cabot's museum and coal and all that? Did you work I knew up there? Huh? You knew Cabot? Oh, yes, I what? knew him, and I knew his Portia, his wife. Oh, my goodness. You know, she was a doctor, and uh, uh, she, she was the kind of doctor. He married her in Texas that when she would feel your head and she could tell, and I always joked, I said, she never felt his head or she wouldn't have married him. <laughs> Oh, we, and of course, they didn't live in the that fort place. The, they yeah. had a little house outside of there, but um, yeah. Well, he didn't even have that place started when we came here. He built that after we came. Huh. In fact, there there was a grocery store here. Al Horton was the grocerman. He lives in Palm Desert. In his way, and. Um, I was at his store one time with my brother, and Al came over and asked me, he said, we were checking out, he said, would you mind if this gentleman is making a write-up if he puts your, takes your picture? And I said, no, and I didn't care. Well, it came out in the Los Angeles Herald Express, a write-up about Desert Hot Springs. And my brother's picture and mine was in there with our names and everything. Well. And so they have one up in the, uh, or they did have one. While it was still, while Cabot's, I mean, no, while the cold still had it. Wow, that'd be something fun to look for again. I, I haven't huh. been up there for a long time. But I have been through. So what kind of a um, relationship did you have with Cabot and Oh, Portia? we didn't have any relationship at all. I knew who he was and he knew who I was. Yeah. But he was a, he was an odd guy. When we came here, down in, um, of course, at that time, Miracle Hill was still Miracle Hill. All the people in town on Easter got together, and they, and they had put up, because it hadn't been shaved off by then. You know where Miracle Hill oh, is? Yes, uh huh. Well, the people in the town had put up a large cross, oh, and they had Easter services okay. at the bottom of the cross. Uh huh. And he had a store down in there somewhere uh, that sold like an old country store. K 
Cabot did? Cabot did, but that was before he ever built the, uh, the uh, other state. I see Audrey Is Star. That her car? Yes. She got lost. Well, <laughs> I'll have to check with her. But you know what? I'm going to check and see also if she has a copy of her uh, her book in the car to show you. Maybe we can take a break. Mm -hmm. it was to get in a attack, call attack. I don't drive anymore. Mm -hmm. When I was 90, I made up my mind when I was 97, I would know more drivers. Haven't missed it at all. I never had a ticket. I never had an accident. I never hurt anybody. No. Forget it. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think anyone, in fact, I probably should have given it up earlier. You drove until you were 97 years old. Never had a ticket. Yep. But, That's what um, we like. Uh, you know, and it, you hear about these, oh, has she got flowers too? <laughs> I'll have to. This is. Did you wrap it? Oh yes. <laughs> now where do you live, Audrey? I live on the uh, over near Mountain View, the Bubbling Wells Ranch. Oh, you have this um, oh, Bubbling Wells Ranch. I, well, of course, I when we first this is something. Uh, we used to swim at the Bubbling Wells before. Before. Uh, it was bubbling. Well, I guess I don't know. It was. Yeah, I think it was bubbling wells, and I have a funny story about it too. You know, across seventy four, there's an Indian reservation. Um, you know, oh. no, is it no sixty two? Yes, sixty two. Yes. There's an Indian reservation. There's also one in in uh, Cabazon or something, but it extends over this way. And the Indians, the people that lived here, there was no pools here in town at all. The, they would go down there like as a group of men and, and they were uh, swimming nude in this thing. And they heard this snickering in the bushes. Mm -hmm. The Indians had come, always came over here to swim and here was these Indian women behind the bushes, <laughs> snickering. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, That's wonderful. And we used to go over there and swim. Well, now there there was actually something that had little cabins, and it was that was called Bubbling Wells because someone phoned yeah. me the other day. And yeah, asked that was me. Bubbling Wells. It was the little rock houses there, and there was a story about Al Capone, but I never believed it. I think that was just hype. Oh yeah, that's mm -hmm. the two bunch palms. Now. Two bunch. Yeah, that's oh, the Al two Capone bunch one. story. But that was what we called Bubbling Wells. Well. Probably Bubbling Wells is a newer name. No. I mean, the, the people oh, who named yeah. this property probably took that. Oh! Mm. Oh! Name. Oh! Look at that. It's That's, a chest. It's from India. Uh, it really it is? In it. Yes, it really is from India. I, I brought it back from India. Oh, That's lovely. It's one place I haven't been. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we haven't heard about your travels. I traveled for 30 years. This is chocolate. <laughs> this is. I'm so glad I opened it because it's so much more than a, a, a thing of chocolate. Oh wow. yeah, it's, it's that. Oh, don't you want it back? Of course not. It's for mm. you, my dear. It's for your being so lovely to talk mm. to us and uh, help us to get some history of Desert Hot Springs. So you really? Th yes, it's yours. It's lovely. Did you like the food in India? Oh yes, I like Indian food. Uh, uh, I've only had it once. My granddaughter took me to an Indian restaurant in the. Oh, I'm sorry, hmm. and uh, I didn't care for the, the 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 meat was cooked. It was pink. Oh yeah, that's a, that's one of the uh, spices they put in there. Turns but I didn't. Food it didn't pink. really. I only had that one uh, dinner, and I didn't. I wasn't too when. Well, sometimes one dinner isn't enough of a you know, choice. I, I was in Japan, <clears throat> and I thought I wouldn't be able to eat the food, but I loved it. Well, good for you, because mm. it's healthy. Yes. Yeah. All my life, I loved to travel, and I had never even been. The only places I had been before my husband died was 
uh, Canada and Mexico. Oh, so you did your traveling after he passed away? Then. Absolutely. Oh. For a third. In fact, I went on a 37 day bus trip the year he died. Oh. Well, good for adventuresome you. Yes. <laughs> well, I only quit traveling. Uh, well, I went to Hawaii a few years ago, but about five years ago, but, uh, but I don't call that traveling. <laughs> this is the day before Valentine's oh, Day. Oh, yes. <laughs> Alta, Nancy, and Audrey. I have uh, another friend, Alta. That's an old-fashioned name. To an extraordinary lady. <laughs> I don't think I'm extraordinary. Uh, well, well, I certainly do. You're only the second person that I have known who was 100. And that lady, I went to her 100th birthday party. My husband and I did. We went to her 101st, 102nd, 103rd, and then 104. She just... It wasn't Lillian uh, Niles. No, no. It was in... Um, Oh, because she would live to be 104 here in town. Yeah, no, it wasn't here in town. Mm -hmm. But she also was a, a lovely lady who'd uh, written uh, school textbooks that were still being used in the um, Glendale Public Schools. Uh, she started painting at age 60, oh. and her landscapes were beautiful. I did, too. See, oh, wait, and you do. That's her, that's, okay. that's you do watercolors. Pictures. You two are a parallel. You, you do watercolors. No, watercolors are much harder than oil. Oil, you can make mistakes and rub it out and do it over, but watercolor, you can't. Well, I, I can do a little bit. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can fix well, up some things sometimes. Anyway, oh, wow, that's, see, now, yeah. And look there, she's got you, that wonderful forest with the river going through. That oh, is just gorgeous. You and that lady would have been a pair. I, I, see, all my life I have drawn. I've always had a, I, my sketchbook that I used to, I didn't make that. In fact, a lady that lived out at uh, on Dillon made that, and I never liked it. I had it in my bedroom, and then since I've had it here in the living room, I like it. Yeah, well, it's, it's like looking out the window uh -huh. over the ocean. Very, very nice. Really nice. Um, Audrey uh, was wondering kind of where we were in our conversation. So um, we talked about your coming we talked about everything. Right, in Washington State and, and uh, living in Wilmington and a uh, couple sons fought in World War II and coming here and uh, the old coffee. And she says it's beautiful. Now where is the, what do you call that? It isn't a, it isn't a turtle. It's a, it is. It is it's a, a turtle. turtle. And now, you know what? I had, I, I, a couple of years ago, I bought an abalone oh. and I gave it away. Oh. And uh, I love abalones, but that is, did you get that in India? No, no, I think that's a Native American. What? A Native American. Uh, I love it. Silver. Thank you. But I, this lady had a, um, you know what abalone is? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Beautiful, yeah. Well, this lady, I was staying at a retirement home for a month up in Torrance, by the ocean. And this lady had this, this about this big, gold, and that, a small abalone, looked like an abalone shell with a pearl in it. Ooh. And I admired it so much, and she told me that her daughter, her husband, and some friends were raising abalone up near, uh, had an abalone place up near San Francisco. And her daughter, as a sideline, was making the selling this jewelry. So I bought one from her. It was gorgeous. But a niece was down that likes jewelry, so I gave it to her. Oh, that's mm -hmm. lovely. Now, have you, um, what I was curious about was when you came to Desert Hot Springs, and what year was that? 44. 44. How large a town? 12 houses. 12 houses. And the streets were all dirt rough big rocks and everything not a street light you ought to see this fight we had when we wanted street lights was yes. it was it an incorporated town no or just county it was just county, county. okay and the, well the county would come in once a year and grade the streets oh 
But you then when we incorporated, we didn't want to, I didn't, we didn't want to incorporate, but we did. You were talking about getting involved with the uh, helping hands of the desert. Oh, yeah, and some of the, your oh, activities yes. that you Angel got involved Angel View. With. We were talking yeah. about Angel View, that all of a sudden, when the movie stars got into that Angel was View. It. She was starting to tell us. And I told her that Regis, Regis Philbin was there. Because was uh, because we were all volunteers up at Angel View. And we had open house one day, and Regis Philbin came in, and he signed the... I was at, had the uh, guest book, and I shook hands with him. Hmm. So that was... And she said Chuck Connors, remember him? Mm -hmm. a gun. No, he, he had a Jeep, and he'd come over and take the children out. Well, we had just this one little store here up on Pearson. And it wasn't really a junk store. But every penny went to Angel View. And then uh, Palm Springs started to get so interested and uh, they bought this, where this building is up here now, and uh, disbanded our store. We were, the, we were the number one store that was our designation, number one. And they opened this other store, but they put in paid, because we never had any paid uh, mm -hmm. workers. And we couldn't do anything. We could show stuff, but we couldn't do any of the business. And we got so disgusted that um, we all quit. We worked about two days, and they, they put us, and it was so bad that we couldn't take it. Hmm. So then a group of us got together, and four women, three or four, each put up $1,000. We rented a store, and we opened Hands of the Desert, which is down. And it's such a lovely store. It's more like going in for a... Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's clean and it's nice, oh. and we bought the store eventually to $120,000. Mm, wow. But we still, we give, we have a list that long that money we give to every month. And Angel Views always were in one of them. We all, you know, as it's, but, uh, now, this house you live in now, this was not the original house you moved to, or? Yeah. This house that we bought in uh, 1957, because it, it was cheap, $6,000. Oh. It was ready to fall down. It's a very funny house. I, I hated it. But now I'm very comfortable here. I do have a lady that comes every day. I was wondering about that. And she that. doesn't, because I, I don't drive anymore. Mm -hmm. Not since 50, 90, I was 97. <laughs> Isn't that great? Well, your house is darling. It's just, a, it's a nice size. It's very comfortable yeah. for me. She does my shopping. And, uh, of course, she has tried for six years to make me into her. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you mean by that? <laughs> well... She's bound to get an answering service. Oh, I see. I'm here all the time. And she, I tried to figure it out. And the, she took my phone that I've had for years that I love and threw it up in my closet. And I hate these oh. little phones. Oh. I, can't, I, I don't use it very much. I have my regular phone. So she's trying to bring you into the 21st oh, century, yes. huh? And she wanted me to pay my bills like she did. And she's brought so many things. I've got a lot of things here I don't approve of, really, but I go along with it. Because uh -huh. the good balance is yeah. the bad. Now, who were the characters in town when there were 12 houses here? Oh, well, I was uh, uh, showing we this. Um, we have, I see, don't this, want to go this, this lady here had the Idle Hour Cafe. That's where we did the. See, Alta piece in the paper about the dance is <laughs> mm -hmm. what got me. <laughs> I'm so glad I put yeah. that sentence in there. Oh, I was fishing and I reeled you in. You reeled me <laughs> in because normally I wouldn't answer that. I'm so glad you did. And look, there's an Airstream trailer. You know, that was, background. we had that in the backyard here. You know, those are really uh, valued today. Well, you know what happened? At that, after my husband died, this was just a little tiny trailer. 
this woman right here is the, uh, right now, she is the um, superintendent of schools in Yukaipa. Hmm. She was making $100,000 a year as a principal. Now she's getting a lot more. Well, now, she, she, so this no. is a more recent this is, this is This is this last Christmas. Just January 2006. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So this is her family, huh? Yes. Her husband is in, um, this is her husband. This is a very, uh, he's in uh, air conditioning. Very, very successful. The daughter, the oldest girl, Renee, works in London. She has a very big job. And the two boys, let's see, they're both, one came down, the son, uh, the father, their, her father came, brought her down, they came down, uh, no, she wasn't, she was here before my birthday. Her father came down with, with uh, this one. He's six foot four, and he says his brother's a oh, taller. Oh my! Well, now what's their link to Desert Hot Springs then? Well, he, uh, uh, this girl's father and uncle and aunt went to high school, and the, they lived here, and they went to high school in Palm Springs. So that's right, because there was no high school. Here. There was no, no there was no schools. No school there were three there. children that went to school. Three children. Now, Buzz Scambrell had that article by that girl that lives in Texas. Her n name was, um, oh, I forget what her name was, but her step-grandfather was Bill Tarbutton, who drew, was a well driller. Oh. Those three children, the two Patrick children and uh, the, the Tarbutton girl, one of the parents would take them down to Garnett every morning, and they'd catch the school bus for Palm Springs. Then one parent would have to be down there when the school bus got there in the evening. And then when we first moved here, they had started to build this building across from the old post office up on Pearson. Mm -hmm. It was called the um, Association Hall. The people don donated the lumber and all the work. My husband worked on the building. It was a huge, well, it was one big room. And that's where everything in town was held. If we had a potluck or if we had a speaker or anything. And um, uh, that was where the first school, and I think they had five children. Hmm. Hmm. So everything happened there. Everything happened there. It, it's been, I think it burnt down. So. Going back on Audrey's question then about the quote characters in town, you, when you think about people who people talk about, like people talked about Cabot, people, uh, you know what I'm asking? Uh, gossip? Who, no, not gossip, but people who were kind of like city leaders or people oh. who people that other people talked about. Now, Gus, Gus Gambrell had an article in there not long ago about this man. He never lived here. But it's, uh, he was, uh, uh, he lived in his car. He was a World War I veteran that had TB, and he came out to the desert. And uh, he whittled. And Buzz Gambell had an article about him. And uh, I, I used to have, I've got another one in there in the bedroom. This. Because I read a lot. This was to my, my uh, bookmark, Look and it's dirty. Now, he's not the man who whittled the Indian head. No, no, that no. was a young man. Oh. Because there's a resemblance there, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. <clears throat> In fact, Audrey has a necklace that has little little faces on it, and I thought of Audrey's necklace right away. Yeah, uh, it could have been one of that. his because he had, oh, I, I had pins, I had everything. This is so smooth. What have I got in the bedroom there now? Oh. So he was a character. I mean, he lived in he his lived car in his and, his, <clears throat> and he whittled. Well, up, do, you, do you know where this housing project is up against the wall? What did they call that? Uh, not a project, but there's... Paradise? No, no. Mission Lakes? No, no, oh, it's no. not Mission. No. It's right here in town, just at the end of... Uh, at the end of uh, West Drive, way up next to the mountain. Oh, uh, Rancho del Oro? Yes. Yeah. Well, 
He was the best friend of the man that owned that. That, that land? He had, uh, oh, 150 acres or something there. And, uh, but Joe, Joe Bonhorn, now Buzz had his name right, he had the article all right and everything in the paper, mm -hmm. and he had a display of a, uh, but this is so dirty. We'll have to uh, look for that article. Mm -hmm. I don't remember oh, reading it. Been I must a have missed years it. Ago. Yeah. Okay. But he used to come to town, and he'd go up to where Mike Driscoll, who owned all that land up there, where the Rancho del Oro. Yeah. I have a friend that lives there now. Brings back memories. Well, now, since it was unincorporated, did you have any? Um, elected people? I mean, who were the leaders? How did you decide you were going to have something in the association hall? Or, uh, we had a president. Who, who ran things? We had a president. And there was a lovely woman that came here. I don't know where she came from. She was very... She decided that we should have a... Um, um, something to, to make us smarter, whatever, you know what I mean. At that time, they had just opened this tract of land from Pearson down. And see those streets up there, first to eighth, these were A, B, C, D, E, F, you know. Mm. And we had this uh, cultural thing, a tea. Everybody dressed up, hats and all, mm. gloves. And we would meet in the afternoon. And this lady suggested it would be very nice instead of having A, B, C, D, E, F, to na give it names. A coma, Buena Vista, Cahuilla. Oh, it's alphabetical. Yes. The names, I never noticed that. <laughs> I never noticed I it. Funny. Yeah, yes. because lots of cities do that. Yes. I'm just amazed I didn't know that was the names well, were that, alphabetical. But I was sitting there when she suggested oh. it. <laughs> so, a coma. Uh, Buena Vista, yeah. uh, Cahuilla. Yeah. Desert View, D-D, Estrella, Flora, Grenada, 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 and, and, uh, and Hacienda. Hacienda. That, was, oh. that was the end of the time. That is great. Oh. Well, that's a neat piece of information. It sure is. Was uh -huh. that in the 50s um, when that lady well, had probably the Probably in the 50s. Uh -huh. And so she had this tea. Did she hold the tea up in the association? She didn't room? have the tea. Oh. She was just one of the speakers. Uh, who was the one who call, who um, organized the tea and dressing up? Well, and all the, that? The, the 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 people that lived here, when they first got the building built, we held mostly like potlucks or a mm -hmm. church service or something like that. Anything that, oh, in fact, this was um, during the Second World War. And uh, they had uh, an American Legion. I don't know what that was for, sort of, because I know I won two prizes. I won mm. a clock and a ham, <laughs> because hams when you were on rations. Mm. Right. Oh, a half a ham was great. How about that big building up there on Hacienda, just beyond uh, Mountain View? Uh, used to be like an Elks or a... What, that what? was built, but that that's a Johnny come lately, that was a restaurant. Beautiful restaurant. Ooh, great location. So oh, it and they painted it a horrible color. <laughs> now, I think, um, last time I was up that way. So, um, it was a restaurant, and then do you remember it being a lodge of some sort, like an Elks? I or think it was the Moose Lodge for a while. Moose, yeah. uh -huh after the restaurant went. Mm -hmm. Well, they had not only, they had a huge pool, public pool, and mud bath, not mud baths, or all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, when we came here, coffees, uh, up at the corner of 8th and, uh, and uh, Palm was the only place you could swim. And anybody that bought a lot could swim, they and their families, for nothing. And the, all your company could come there and swim for nothing. Oh. And many people in town didn't even have uh, showers at home. They'd all take all their, oh. they'd come up there and they'd take a shower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <coughs> have you owned that land over there? Or? Only for five years. Oh, I bet you paid a penny for it. Mm. 
Well, actually, five years ago, six years ago now, it wasn't that expensive. <laughs> well, now this friend of mine <coughs> that just bought across the road up on the top of the hill, he bought, uh, I think he's got two, two acres. He was putting that housing up there. Oh, yes. He paid... Uh, uh, over a hundred thousand for it, but where he is, uh, you're going up Mountain View. You cross the top, and here's this road. It's a very dangerous uh, turn that yeah. because you have you maybe somebody's coming from this uh, going north, and somebody's going. I, I'm very afraid of that. Uh, now, did you ever get to see that? first um, hole in the hill that um, Cabot Yerksa lived in? Yes. And, and where was that? Exactly? Miracle Hill. This, this hill there, I don't, well, I, no, they leveled it off. They took that cross down. Yeah, she was saying that they had church services at Easter on Miracle Hill. But we had hill. a big they cross there up there. Sunrise mm -hmm. service. And then some sub provider came along and leveled it off and he took Cabot's that dug out with him, but we saw it. Okay. Yeah, I, I've never been able to figure out exactly where Now that's that was, where it was, so. it's Miracle Hill. So, mm -hmm. Monterey, is the street on the top now? Of, that I have no Miracle idea Hill, what's on or? the top. Okay. The only one I know is Mountain View. Mm -hmm. Dillon or Mountain View. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but, Miracle Hill, is that where Cabot's, the, the Pueblo is now? Oh, no. no. This is it, on 4th Street, I think. No, no. Uh, Flora. Yeah. Desert View, I think. Desert, Desert View. Or yeah. close to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when we first came here, of course, you know, 12 houses, there were, there were no dumps. When, when you go out to Pearson to turn to, to turn the right past Danger View, mm -hmm. no, yeah. mm -hmm. There was a little, there was a little uh, road in there. That's where people dumped their stuff. Uh, oh. And then there was a well up there, and then they were dumping it there. And it wasn't until uh, uh, the, they finally dumped it out at that long canyon. Yes. Oh, that was horrible. Yes. I was so glad when they got the garbage. We're still kind of working on that today. We want to get past that old dump to hike in Long Canyon. And so we're still, even today, we're still kind of, uh, you know, suffering the oh, yes. uh, the results of that dump being out there because people still drive out there and dump. Well, the people, yeah, of course they do. Yeah. The town is growing so fast. Well, I love this town. I say I've lived here a long time. But you said your husband fell in love with it first, but you came out willingly. What do you yeah. do? <laughs> you probably talked about what his job was, or he was a Los Angeles fireman. He was an engineer on the fire boat. Fire boat in in Wilmington, and how many grandchildren do you have now? Five. And I have great grandchildren and great great grandchildren. Oh, that's. I have one great great granddaughter that I've never. She's two years old. I haven't seen her yet. And. Um, so each of your sons uh, had children then? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. So what did kids do? What, your, okay, your sons, okay. What? Well, what my children were, were in the service when we came here. Oh, okay. They were never okay. here. So they mm -hmm. didn't grow up. They loved it here. Yeah. So um, I'm just trying to think about the things yeah. you did then. Your husband was building houses, and you were working on the an angel view and helping hands and that kind of thing. Well, they weren't here for, the, for quite a few years after we came here. They was here before they started. Now, where did you buy your groceries? Where did you shop when there were 12 houses here? Well, there were no places. You couldn't buy a cube of butter in Desert Hot Springs. So, and uh, when they first put in uh, Staters, I think Staters was the first one. And then when they were building bonds, I thought it'll never do. That's how I met, met Nellie Kaufman, is we is shopped over in Palm Springs. Uh -huh. And uh, I went in and, and I met her at her hotel boarding house. I can't wait to read this. Yeah. Um, 
Inez was telling about. The book was around the house for years, and then she just, something made her come and finish it, and uh, all of a sudden, the time was right. And then she's ordered four more and given them away to friends. And when they, when they delivered her four new books, they sent along this free one as a gift, Frank Bogert. And you know, he's kind of doing the same thing uh, that you're doing, and that is remembering individual oh, people. Th that's what this book is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's so great because... And I knew some of the people in this book. You know, it would be fun, and I hope that we can come back. I don't want This to... is not as interesting as this one. Uh-huh. Because I know, knew a lot of the people. Now, where the hospital is now, that was the hotel. The... Uh, El Mirador. El Mirador, right. Yeah. And we lived, at that time, we were caretakers at a uh, ranch up here. And the, the people that owned the ranch, they were movie people, and uh, they knew the man, the Ray, Ray Ryan, that owned the El Mirador. So one day, El, Ray Ryan and uh, some friends brought lunch over from their hotel to visit with the... And uh, um, now a lot of people don't know who Jack Dempsey was. Oh, I, we the do. fighter? Mm. You do? The fighter? Well, I think I've got the prize got his fighter? picture here. Yeah, the, he was up there. He came up with his manager, who was Jewish, and uh, and he was Catholic. Uh, uh, Jack Dempsey was Catholic. Now is just is this Jack Dempsey the prize fighter? Yes. Ah, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Gene Harlow was up there. Ooh. And a lot of movie people up there. Now you say you were caretakers for a while at this movie pe at the movie people's place. Who were they? Who were they? Were they producers no, or no? He was a he, he, Mr. Gurney was a. Uh, I don't know who owns that. Uh, it's up above those ranch that. Uh, what'd you call that? Del Rancho Sa del Oro. Del Oro. Right. Yeah, they they owned forty acres next to it and had a house built there. Beautiful view of the valley. Now, did you was Singing Tree Ranch? That's down. Um, south of Dillon on Bubbling Wells, actually maybe on Mountain View. Who owns it? Well, it's not there anymore, but um, one of our other local people, Paul Gregory, who's a movie producer, owned it, and he was married to Janet Gaynor. Oh, you, you mean Gregory? Yeah. Oh, yes. In fact, I knew uh, Janet Gaynor. Ooh. Oh, yes. Yeah. She got her hair fixed at the same beauty shop I did. Uh-huh. But I never met her husband. But she was so nice. She, you know, a lot of those people are a little bit hoity-toity. Yes. But after I was introduced to her, if I'd meet her in the grocery store, she always knew me. I thought that was funny. Mm -hmm. she so, was how, so how did you get introduced to her? She got her hair fixed in the same oh, place. Yes. And, okay. and so she was famous for that movie, Seventh Heaven. Mm -hmm. Well, the place where they have the follies now in Palm Springs. Yeah, the old plaza. Huh? Was it called the Plaza Theater? Yes. Yeah. Well, that was here. That was the plaza was there when we came here. And uh, it had been closed. And they were going to have a showing of Seventh Heaven as a... And Charlie Farrell, who I knew at the... T uh, not the tennis club, the racket club. The racket club, uh-huh. Um, so uh, I had never seen the Seventh Heaven, so my beauty operator she got to, she was going to take me. So I when I was up there and uh, I went over to Janet Gaynor and I said that we were going. I said I never saw the Seventh Heaven, but now we're going. Oh, she said I hope you like it, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and I did. Oh. Well, it's nice to know that she was a nice person. I think she was a very nice person. I think her husband has been, a, I don't know just where their place is, never did know. Well, I know it's down in the valley, the ranch. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it would be just south of the city limits of Desert Hot Springs, yeah. Do you remember that movie called Lost Horizons? Oh, and yes. we, we were hiking there yesterday up where they filmed that was supposed to be Shangri-La up there at the top. Do you remember that happening? Oh, yes. 
Yeah, that was Frank Capra, I think, Frank was the Capra. director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I have this friend who belongs to the um, Historical Society in Palm Springs, and we, she, well, we talked for two hours yesterday, <gasps> and she has never seen this book. The Nellie Kaufman one? Really? She didn't know anything about wow. it. Or, you know, if it's still there. Well, uh, his, uh, after, he, after Walter Woods died, her, his widow married a local um, electrician and tore the original house down and built a new home there. Of course, she, by that time she had a lot of money. And uh, before the house was finished, we went up and looked at it. And you know, in those days, it cost fifty thousand dollars. Ooh, that was oh, big. That was yeah. a house today that would go for a million. It was the most beautiful house I'd ever seen. But fifty thousand dollars was a lot of money. Oh yes, and that was the home of Walter Woods. No, well, it, the land was his, but okay. the house he never, he never, it was his widow built it. His widow built it okay. with her new husband. And his daughter. His was daughter was. Because it wasn't her daughter. It wasn't the widow's daughter. Uh huh. The last time I went with this man that we worked for, because he knew the whole family, we drove out Dillon. I don't know how far, because it wasn't like it is today. There were no trailer parks. And went up this road where she had some land, and she'd built a shack. And he told me she had. Well, I used to see her bring her laundry into the laundromat. You'd never seen such dirty clothes in your life. And she had a lot of dogs. So I sat in the car because I was driving. And he went in to see her. He says, he said, I almost came out and threw up. That's his own daughter. Walt. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. This was the man I worked for. Oh. But the, the, the ranch. Okay, the okay, the daughter of Walter Woods, and this was the man you worked for at the ranch. What was the, his name, the man you worked for? Gurney. Oh, Gurney, okay. That's the house, it's up there. See, here is um, Del Oro, mm -hmm. and the 40 acres next to it um, is where the Gurneys lived. And at one time, after they both died, um, a, a very famous opera director owned that land. Ooh, that'd be interesting to know who that was. He, well, I, I, did, I used to know, but I don't remember it anymore. He was married to a Japanese. Mm. And at one time they had, they were, Lily Ponds wanted to get, uh, they wanted to promote um, opera in Palm Springs. So they came over here and they had a reception at the Hortons beautiful home. And they asked uh, the woman that had the hate it that had the hardware store. Uh huh. They asked us to pour. Oh. Mm. And Lily Pons was there. Woo. She was a tiny little woman. Oh. And the Japanese wife was there from the where we used to work. See? And that oh, here's another yes. person who knew. And who that was held in someone's house or what? Yeah. It's up on um, just off West Drive, up above above all the uh, well, it's up on West Drive, the house. No, it's off West Drive. Now, do you, um, I was just wondering, can you go out in a car and ride around, or do you not go out anymore? Well, yeah, I go out if I feel like it. Because I was thinking it would be really interesting to go for a ride, and you could point out some of these things to us. Because it would be nice for the historical society to, yes. to know, you know, this was the house. I, I never knew. I used to go up, you know, John Santucci that has it, uh -huh. of the uh, Capri. Yes. Well, he was head of the Historical Society. And every time I'd go up there, he'd come out and sit and talk to me. Mm. Because I knew he and his wife where they ever had the restaurant. But, uh, yeah, it would be wonderful to, to have your memories of, you know, Here's a house today. Looks like this, but you know, see, there was well, there were no houses s south of Pearson. Mm -hmm. There were no stores, no nothing. Amazing. And the first store, say this little adobe bar down here on the corner, uh -huh. right? That was 
uh, just about our first store. Horton had that store. And the one that's the Escapade now? And that was like a little grocery store? It was a, it's a little adobe building. Yeah. Al Horton built, had that built. It wasn't much, what, what about as big as this house, I guess. And he had Paul Price, well, he had a butcher in there. And uh, then he, made, he had another store, he, I think he rented it or something. And then he built the big store that and now is like Home Depot, and, you know, where they used to sell the uh, hardware and stuff across Pearson. Mm -hmm. um, where, that, where Ace Hardware is now? Yeah, uh -huh. that was uh, Horton's store, the whole thing. Uh-huh. Now it's hardware and food. Uh, food Whatever, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, the first hardware store was Hayden's, and uh, she was my best friend, Mrs. Hayden. Mm. We used to travel together and do things together. Yeah, we haven't had any contact. Uh, I personally haven't had any contact with Mr. Sanducci, but I understand that he uh, was in the Historical Society. He, he was had, president of it, I think, yeah, we, but he never asked me to join. Well, maybe he knows they talk too much. Oh, oh no. no. Now, we don't want to tire you either. Well, if um, I get tired, I'll just go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, you know, we could always come back another time and, yeah, and I, I talk hope you do. You know, what I would like to do is, is uh, listen to the uh, tape, and we can pull out some of the names and some of the dates, and we'll kind of get a handle uh, of, on what you've shared with us. And then maybe we can come back another time and fill in some of the gaps, and then maybe we can take a ride, like uh, Audrey suggested. If as long as you're, it. as long as you're game, we'd love to oh, spend see, our I time. Oh, see, I go out I, every Friday. I get my hair done. Okay. And your hair is beautiful, by the way. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know when. The, it's, it's an effort for me to. Um, you know what? It's an effort for me to do is take a shower. Oh, sure. Mm hmm. Well, you are amazing. You really are. Isn't she? She doesn't take yeah. any medication. I mean, such an example for us, right? I know. Oh. <laughs> no, I've told, told the other girls I have shingles in my eye, and I'm oh. losing the sight in my left eye. And it makes, it's, it's, it's an, I'm always aware of it. Oh. So, you, it's always an irritation. But uh, there's a lady comes in the beauty shop, and she, every bone in her body aches, and I don't ache anywhere, so. In fact, the woman that takes care of me is going to be 70 years old. And she's got, she takes about five pills. She goes, <laughs> takes a pill to go to the bathroom, to go to sleep, mm -hmm. this, that, and the other. Do you get exercise? No, I walk out the mailbox as well. Well, that's probably enough. I used to be, I used to be, I love to swim <clears throat> and walk. But, um, and did yeah. you go to coffees a lot and get into the warm every hot day? Water? Oh, so that was we also we had a shower, but we, had, we used it for a closet. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a little restaurant there at the coffee pool. And um, you know, it's been very interesting to watch, you know, the like the building up of the uh, churches. And schools, I can't yeah. believe the schools. Yeah. Do you ever get out and see the holiday parade when you see all the kids going up and down Palm? Uh, I have watched it, but I don't walk down there anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's when you really realize how many kids there are in this oh, town. Oh, when you see the schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. Um, well, we would like to. I'm thinking maybe we might. Uh, wrap it up now oh, and let yes. you rest and then we might uh, not wear out our welcome we could come back <laughs> but you know on my birthday did you, did you know i was 100 years old on yes my I, mm -hmm. I saw that in the paper before uh, alta told me you yeah and, and you know i wrote a note to uh, buzz and i paid him for the papers and i told him i said you you know i said i didn't even know what he was writing about 
because it, you know he embroidered it so much. He <laughs> told me I was an artist and everything. Well, you are an artist. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Well, very, very no, no. immature. No, no, very no, no. Uh -huh. amateur. No, 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 no. I I know artists, and you are not an amateur. Mm. Believe me. You know what I'd like? I've been robbed a couple of times. Oh. But. Uh, uh, I had I had my paint box, my I had a couple easels out in the shed out there, and somebody took took them all. But my sketchbook I think is in the garage because I had taken it out, and I always used to I go out on the desert and uh, sketch things. Mm. Oh, you're a kindred spirit with that. Audrey. Yeah. <laughs> love to see that but, sketchbook. Yeah, I would too. I don't know where it is. It's in the garage, but also I don't clean the garage anymore. Well, is there any way we could help you to... No, I have this granddaughter who is coming tomorrow from Los Angeles. She's 55. And she's my um, executor. Okay. I first had my oldest son, then my next son, and I told her, I said, I hate to give it to you because what are you going to do? So maybe uh, maybe she'll look for it and see if she can find it. Well, a sketchbook. See, last time she was out here about a month or so ago. This is a very funny story. I have I don't have a bank box anymore, but I have a, a steel box in my closet that I keep important papers. And for some reason, we, she brought it out. I asked her to and put it here, and I went. We went through it. And there were a lot of things that um, we could, you know, I could get rid of, but they were very valuable papers, anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And I always keep them in the same place. Well, when my husband died, and he's buried over here in this cemetery, mm -hmm. this is really, I don't know whether I should tell it or not. Oh, let's. <laughs> <laughs> we're all adults. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the grave next to him. Well, we didn't have a happy marriage. Oh. Uh, I, I became when I, when he I missed him when he died, but uh, but I was a very um, uh, I don't know what you call it. I, I, I didn't wake up soon enough. <laughs> well, you know what? In those days, there I think there was this. You got married, and you know that was it, and you didn't ever consider. He was the boss. Yeah, he was ten years older than sure, I was. Sure, sure. No, it's very normal. Yeah. Well, I didn't like it anyway. So I've got the grave next to him, but I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be um, ter, um, cremated. Ter, cremated. Mm -hmm. Well, first I wanted to be thrown. They asked me to take my have my granddaughter. And we talk about this. We have a great time. Yeah. Uh, at first, we were going to go out in the desert. Well, now it's all built up. So there is, a, in um, San Pedro, there is a uh, botanical gardens that we go to. And I wanted to take these ashes and a rose and a paper sack and sprinkle amongst the roses. Around the roses. Well, so she asked me what I'm going to do with these papers at the, I've got this grave over there. I don't want to live next, go there and she said, why don't you sell it? So she took the papers. Well, I'm going to sell that grave. She said, a woman wants to buy it. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great. but he loved that. Good for you. It was a woman chaser. <laughs> <laughs> he has a strange woman next to him. Oh, <laughs> for <Great>. eternity. <laughs> and, and she's going to go to Hawaii in May. So the $500 I get for the $60 grave, uh -huh. it's going to be handed to her to, to get something for her. So. Well, well, bless your heart. That's a, I, that, I'm, I'm proud of you for yeah. doing that's a, that. That's a great story. I am. Where's the, where's the cemetery? You've lived here for five years and you don't know where the cemetery is? I don't. I don't. I don't have any idea. I don't think so I know. We're going over there tomorrow. I have to go over there and sign the papers. Oh, well, where is it? Well, I know how I'm going. I've got a uh, t map here that I'm... We go, it's on Ramon. Okay. You go to, you, I'm going on the freeway to Ramon. Okay, Ramon and Country Club, over there. And 
in Palm Desert Rancho Country Mirage. Club. But this, it, when you, used to, you turn left to go to Eisenhower. Okay. You go over the freeway and you go, but you just go straight ahead and it's the top of the hill on the right. I know that. That's where Frank Sinatra's buried. Oh yeah, not yeah. far from where my husband is. Uh-huh. And I don't want to go there. Uh-huh, no. I haven't been there for I've been there. I have been there, but not very often. <laughs> but you know, I want to go up here. The mortuary here has closed, the old one. Yes, yes. Yeah, they closed. Fair and enough. Rose was a. Uh, that's where I would have to go. I wanted to go call them and have them come down, and I wanted to pay for it and everything to make it. But my granddaughter doesn't want me to do that. Of course, I would, could do it if I wanted to. Uh -huh. Well, maybe that's something that she wants to take She wants care. to handle it. Yeah, and and you should let her do it because that's oh, something I she can do for you. Yeah. She'll be here tomorrow and we're going to go over yeah. to the mortuary. I mean, I look, yeah, I looked into that myself and they actually, like you can prepay. Of course you they can. Hope a, a third party. Like she, and she has two uh, deodorant. Um, I can't I never can remember the name of her dogs, little white dogs. The 81. Oh my goodness. Uh, now I bought these. It's so foolish. But I love them. Oh, oh, look at those. Oh, it would be fun. Should we have, next time we come, can we crack those out? Uh, yeah. Open? I, well, what, what I we? did when I was going to have luncheon, I've never used them. I took them all out and washed them very carefully, and if I break this, it'll be my fault. But I bought these up at the beauty shop she has. This, this probably, at one time, was a wedding gift, and it's, oh. and it's platinum. Oh my goodness. Made in Italy. Oh, gorgeous. Well, wouldn't that be fun? We can bring the Ooh. wine. You supply the glasses. I got a lot of wine. Oh. <laughs> Everybody, when they... When I would drink a little wine, they all brought me wine. Okay. That's beautiful. I 